In-betweening drawings is a common practice found in traditional animation. But what exactly are in-betweens and how do they work? In-betweening is the process of adding more drawings in between your poses and breakdowns. Its main function is to make the animation move smoothly and to add more visual information that may be subtle when playing. While it does make the animation look like it has high production value, it's also key to having engaging, believable, clear, and good animation. Due to the nature of having to make more drawings to fill in gaps, this is a laborious task. But that's not to say you can't screw it up. That being said, there are many ways to in between your key drawings. And there is a language that animators speak to each other with. In hand-drawn animation, you'll notice a little ruler or grid somewhere in the animator's drawings. These are called timing charts. You'll notice that every animator has a different style when making these, but they all work similarly to each other. When an animator finishes up his keys and breakdowns, he or she hands them off to an assistant or an in-betweener who fills in the gaps. The person tasked with in-betweening the drawings uses this chart as instructions given by the animator. The timing chart has information on how many drawings are needed to fill the in-between, how far each drawing should be spaced from each other, is there favoring, does the motion slow in or slow out. The chart is an essential guide especially to those who don't animate digitally and have to plan their movements before they even get to see how they play on the computer. And also, it is very essential to learn in-betweening by using charts. Let's talk about the basic anatomy of a timing chart. Since every animator has a different approach to a timing chart, I want to show you guys on how I make a timing chart and how you can familiarize yourself with similar aspects. Usually, you read it from top to bottom. This is the order of how it'll move in the timeline. Since we aren't using any frames, I'm just going to use letters A and B to represent my frames. Some animators have a different preference and change the order, but it's common to read it from top to bottom. I'm going to add a drawing in between A and B. This drawing is called C. When animators circle a drawing or frame number, they are saying that this frame is a key drawing. A key drawing in the most basic sense is where the drawings are at its most extreme. Some animators also make keys based on contrast, change, or a different sense of story or direction. They also call them story keys. I'm going to make drawing B a key as well. Some animators double underline their frame to make them keys, but we're just going to use circles since circles are easier to read. A single underline means you are turning a drawing or frame into a breakdown. To me, a breakdown is another extreme that connects the key drawings together. It's technically not an in-between, but depending on the context, it can act as one. When you see two curvy lines connect like this, with the middle meeting at our breakdown here, this is indicating that C is an even half of A and B. These two specific curves means that it is an even half. Therefore, frame C must have its lines evenly spaced from A and B. I'm going to add another drawing in between A and C. Now by applying these two curves, this means that D is evenly spaced between A and C. My question to you guys now is, can you make drawing D before having finished A or C? The answer is no. Since D is evenly spaced in between A and C, we need to have done those drawings first because they have the information we need to make drawing D. I'm just going to apply the same thing at the lower half. Now, this chart is saying that the animation is all evenly spaced. Even numbers, even curves, and each of them are evenly spaced side by side. This says that the animation is going to move at an even, constant motion. Now, if we did this, there's more drawing information at the top part. Notice how the spacing between the frames get gradually bigger from top to bottom. This is called a slow out, and it means that the animation will start as slow and gradually gain speed. If we did this to the other end, we get a chart called a slow in. It acts as the opposite, meaning the animation will start as fast, but gradually become slower. Aside from half curves, there are curves called thirds, and has three meeting points. This type of curve means that C is not going to be evenly spaced between A and B, and will actually favor one keyframe. You'll notice how one point of the curve meets at C, and the other doesn't have a frame. It's imaginative. This is just emphasizing that C is favoring A over B. 
Since C is closer to A, its spacing will be much smaller, leaning towards A. Or you can make C favor B. I only usually use thirds when I'm animating long and slow scenes, or when the context is really specific. Speaking of specificness, let's talk about the last example, favoring. While it does not have any curves, it's clear that C is pretty much almost similar to drawing A. Notice an example how C is basically almost the same thing as A, but has a very small influence of B in it. B is the dead head down there. That's just me exaggerating favoring. I usually use these for very short bits, or things that play fast. It gives a snappy energy in the animation. Congrats! Now you understand the basic anatomy of a timing chart. Your graduation reward will be using frame numbers this time. Bling! Now that's what I call an animation timing chart. Let's talk about the common timing charts there are to recognize. Halves, halves slow in, halves slow out. All evens and halves, thirds, and favoring. I added a little red dot to skim through each frame. Notice how the spacing of how the red dot moves is reflected on these charts. This is a symbolic reference to how the animation will move and how it'll be in between. Let's see some character examples. The character I'll be using is B, which was contributed by my friend and former classmate Tan Dang. He's a pink and yellow striped B with a happy-go-lucky attitude. His friendly look is supported by his overall round and bubbly design. I've provided a link to Tan Dang's online blog. Go follow his work. Also, the Stringbing Workshop is open to using artists' submitted characters to be animated for the Stringbing Workshop. More on that later, though. Anyways, back to the topic. So I drew three poses on the B. The start, its breakdown, and its end. I'm going to use these same drawings for these following examples. I animated an in-between the B demonstrating the first type of chart on the list, a slow in and even halves. Notice how it starts off as very fast and ends at the last key with a decreasing speed. I achieved this effect by having a lot of drawings in between our breakdown and our last key, with no in-between between our first and last. This chart is used best for things slowing down after an abrupt movement. It's great for action slowing down to a full stop, and great for having a final impact on the take, where the last key makes the most impression. Now to our second chart, a slow out, still in even halves. It's now in the opposite, it starts out as slow and skyrockets as it gets closer to the last key. With no in-between from our breakdown to our last key, we now have more of the in-between drawings in the beginning half. This gives the feeling that the motion is gaining speed, it's starting to accelerate. I usually use charts like this when the character is taking an air, or when the character is starting to fall after a jump. In this example, it's as if the bee is realizing something, and he's quite happy about it. Our third example is a constant motion, an all-evens. Everything is spaced equally, including the spacing of our three initial drawings. There then would be a drawing in between the frames, and that would then create a division of more evenly spaced drawings. I also displayed the chart itself, so you can see how everything is evenly spaced from one drawing to the next, unlike the previous two where the spacing either shrinks or grows. This timing chart is used for things that has constant motion, meaning things like running, walking, swimming, sometimes dancing, or maybe it's used for specific transitions. No drawing here is really making an impression, since again, everything is moving at a constant rate. Our final example is basically a combination on how you could combine two timing charts into one. For this case, I used the slow out and slow in, it starts slow, gains speed, goes fast, and then slows down. One could argue that these types of movements are the most natural, since it shows the subject gaining speed and then finally slowing down to a rest. This type of stuff is great for takes, emotional responses, pose A to pose B movements, settling in and settling out. When you think about combining or implementing charts, the more options you open up yourself to, now, here marks the importance of using a timing chart. Same drawings, same keys, same breakdowns, most importantly, same length of running time. However, they all feel different from each other because they all have different timing charts. The timing charts affected the way they are in between. It's because of this, they all give out a different effect from each other. What effect do you get out of each of them? 
Now we move on to our remaining charts, and to demonstrate them, we will be using another character. The character Jake was also contributed by Tan Dang. Jake is a sci-fi themed cowboy with his design looking like it belongs to an action-adventure TV show. Jake's design to me feels very 80s, from his fashion sense to having a style that sort of reminds me of Akira Toriyama's earlier works in Dragon Ball, with a bit of Saturday morning cartoon feel to it. Looks like a fun character to animate. Here's something I animated mostly in 3s and 4s, with a bit of 2s for quick bits. I chose to have longer holds for each drawing so that it's easier to actually see the thirds and use. Look at the chart and compare it to the animation. This is a classic slow in and slow out movement, but notice how much more tight the drawings are closer to each other. When he reaches down for his gun, there's a lot more favoring to the previous frame, and when he aims it, he's pretty much already in his aiming pose, but adjusting to it slowly. For this case, thirds are great because they can make things snappy and give the drawings a longer and lasting impression. Now for the last example, I had to animate something new, because something like a favoring requires a specific context. In this shot, the cowboy fires his gun, and then recoils. Notice how there's a very short read on the gunfire, but when he whips the gun upwards fast, there's just so much more weight. Why? The favor comes into play with the moment he fires the gun. It's basically almost the same exact pose, as the first drawing, except with a gunshot due to the context. For things like favoring, you really do need to think about the context of the shot, or what key you want to have an impression of. Even though it'll play by really fast, audiences will be able to feel the subtle feeling of the drawing. They won't see it, but again, they will feel it. That's the power that in-betweens have in animation. Anyways, this concludes the introduction to in-betweening. I talked about timing charts, how to read them, several types of timing charts to recognize, and how they are used for in-betweening. In the future, I'll talk about in-betweening techniques and devices to use, do's and don'ts, and sometime, I'll probably do a full demo. Thanks for checking out the Stringbing Workshop, there'll always be more to come.